Hello everyone, this is chapter 2 of our course, Concepts and Dynamics of Management. And in the previous chapter, we've learned about business, things about the external environment, and now we're going to discuss management theories. So management theories, a thing about is that theories are something that not just in the field of management but in all fields if we say theories theories are what we use to explain something explain phenomena and concepts in the case of management management theories are used to explain the structure functioning and the management of organizations so we are going to look up into this and we should always put in our minds when we talk about theories that none is considered complete or fi or accepted as final. We cannot put one theory as the soul, um, the only framework by which we would understand and what we would use to do things in management and since i haven't told you about this yet we we'll always remember that management is about people like you can manage many things management we have many other resources that we manage, but management, what we are referring to in this, in this subject, is more about managing people. It's about leading people. It's about making people do what they need to do to reach our goals and objectives, or the goals and objectives are of the organization. And in case of theories, theories... In regards to physical science like physics none is also this is true for not only management but for the rest of the sciences none is considered complete or final not even the theory of evolution it's not complete or final it's not a law and if we say that that means that there is still, it's just a hypothesis. It, a theory is a tested hypothesis and that has a significantly large amount of testing that has been done to say that this saying is true. But still, as is always, as what is true with hypothesis, there is still a chance for it to be false. So, theories are not final in all fields of sciences. Theories are not final. They could increase in their acceptance as many testings, experiments are done to test them. But we can never say that a, a theory is complete or final or, or is like a law. To explain things and as such especially in our field management if you have heard management is part of of the social sciences and that is in in contrast to hard sciences which are the field of physics chemistry biology the social sciences is about people theories and here's the thing about social sciences unlike the physical um, and hard sciences like physics chemistry and biology they have laboratories to do their experiments to test their theories but we in the social sciences find it very difficult to do that because Again, we are dealing with people. And such is the case for economics. You would 
have heard this in the econo economics lessons that our laboratory is the real world world <laughs> our laboratory is the real world and that's what makes it already difficult fears in the in themselves are already difficult but much more so in our field in the social sciences so we can really say that each theory has some limitations so whatever theory is saying we should always take them with a grain of salt like they they have something that we must consider very seriously in management but they are not always they're not always the ultimate determiner of how we would make decisions especially since management is about decision making and as such management theory just like all others is in the process of evolving changing because we are not yet complete in our knowledge we are limited human beings we don't know anything don't know everything even with the advancement of our sciences today we still don't know everything that is why we are in the state of pandemic as we are because though we have advancement in knowledge yet it still remains that we don't know everything and there are still a lot that we do not know and in relation to that management theory is still evolving now here are school of thoughts or theories in management when you say school of thoughts these are like frameworks mindsets perspectives through which we see and evaluate how management is done in a certain organization so there's classical or traditional thought scientific management human relations school and the management science or quantitative school of thought and we're going to look at each one of them first the class classical or traditional school this is built on principles we're going to look at them later and this is based on the belief that workers only have physical and economic needs so they are not considering other aspects of what a worker is as a human being like pleasure or satisfaction in work only physical and economic needs like so that would be in relation to the basic needs of a human being which which are food clothing shelter water and in this also we know this is the limitation of the classical school it doesn't include the other needs of workers it's limited only on the physical and economic needs and therefore it advocates specialization of labor centralized leadership and decision making and profit maximization it's not that it doesn't care about other things but that this is what this school of thought presses on maximization of profit since again it's limited only by the physical and economic needs which would be met by profit maximization and profit maximization is achieved when there is specialization of labor when labor is specialized and and make sure that it produces quality product or output and as such if labor will be specialized for the sake of maximization of profit then leadership leadership and decision making must be centralized only a few people must make the decision so that the others can concentrate on their labors so let's look at its history this is developed by henry fail and he was a french mining engineer and he started as a janitor and so he's an engineer started as a janitor his company is a coal mining company which is related to him being a mine, mining engineer 
And after this is more than a decade, he took over as the managing director as the company is about to be bankrupt. And then later, many de a few decades later, he lectured and popularized the theory of administration. And here we still look on one of his greatest contribution, which is management principles and elements or 14 principles of management. So if you notice before this, um, what we can call them pioneers in management field are not really called managers. They're a different field like Henry Fayol is an engineer. So this we go back again to one of the things that we should remember about management. It's you can be a man, your man, being a manager is not defined by the course that you take. You can be a student of a management course like you guys are, be some students, yet not be a manager if you won't learn what you are going to learn in this course. So these are the 14 principles of management and we're going to look into them one by one. First is the vision of work or labor. By the way, if you say principle, that is something that will guide, it's a general thing that will guide the specific tasks. So it's like a principle is something that is general, it's a general truth, though it's not necessarily truth, because we have already established earlier that these theories are not final, they're not complete. But we tell them, it's just put this in quotations, it's a general truth used to guide actions, specific actions. So let's look at these principles. Division of labor or work. This means breaking a job into specialized stacks. And this is what we have discussed earlier about this school of thought that it advocates labor specialization why it's to increase productivity so for example the total job of financing appliance sales may be divided into tasks such as credit investigation collection sales and accounting so in this case uh, there will be four four workers or four employees one will do the credit investigation We'll look into the background of a person. The other will be in charge of collection. So it's going to go into whoever has applied for credit and take the their payment. The third will be assigned for sales. And he's just going to sell their product and or service, which in this case is financing appliance. So that means like taking loans for for appliances. And fourth, a fourth worker would be on accounting, which is going to take care of all the records of all that has been happening in this business. So the credit investigator is not going to do the work of the collector. It's just going to look into the background of whoever is applying for loan but he's never going to go to or contact each customer to ask them to pay. At the same time, it's also true for the salesperson. He's going to sell it to as many customers as he can, but he will never go to each one of them to make them pay.